Hello, this is a short video to show bridge players who play on StepBridge how to create system cards, take copies of system cards from other players, amend their own system card and change, diff change to a different system card for when they're playing. There are different ways of accessing your own system card. Once you've logged in to StepBridge, you can click on Club in the top left hand corner and choose Identity. Identity means you, your account. So we open it up, or your uh, system card I should say, and there it is. It's blank at the moment uh, because I haven't filled anything in. There is an identity section. I have filled a little bit out. I put um, the name of the club that I, uh, I, I actually own, but uh, it's, uh, I'm playing online quite a bit now instead of playing at Eastern. But um, And there's my website. But I can put my phone number there. My name's automatically there. I can't hide that. But you can leave that blank or blank if you want to. Uh, but you, at least your name will show. You can't amend that at all, I don't think. I'll just press delete, delete. No, it doesn't work. Now you'll notice down here it says spades equals alt plus s. So if I wanted to put a spade symbol, I could hold down the alt key and press s on my keyboard and the spade symbol would appear. And same for the different ones. But it's not usual to put symbols in this area. We're going to use it more in the convention card area here when we fill out the card. So what I want to do is, if I wanted to edit this card, I could go edit and start typing in um, uh, my new card. So I'll just put my name there. Um, I'll just say Standard American. That's the name of the card, not your name. Press the tab key, it'll move down there. Uh, and description is... Um, just a summary of your system. So I'll just say SA, that's, that's the uh, abbreviation for Standard American. Um, I can put something here like um, Better Minor, BM. All bridge players will understand this different jargon. I could uh, put something like um, Capoletti Gerber. Roman key card, Blackwood, 1430. All the different systems that I use within the standard American environment for my card. Then I can put my openings there. I might say my one club opening at the bidding table means I've got three plus clubs. Now down the bottom here are the symbols again. So if I want a club symbol, I just press Alt plus C. So Alt plus C three glass clubs and a point range of 11 to 20 HCP, high card points. Same for diamonds. I can, if I hold down my left mouse key and just drag it across that text, I can select it and then right mouse key, key press and go copy and move down to there and right mouse key and go paste. So I can do copies and paste. But of course this time it's diamonds, so I'll make that Alt D for diamonds. And again we'll just copy and paste here, remembering that you right mouse click to bring up this, me uh, this menu and you go paste. Now with hearts and spades though, we have 5 plus Alt H or Alt S, hearts or spades. And it might be the same range there. I think I think it still remembers the last copy I did. Yes, it does. Good. And we'll just do one more. One no trump. We'll make it 15 to 18. High card points balanced. And we may have five hearts or five spades. Some players don't have a five card major in their one no trouble openings. Then we can put in our overcalls. Let's move that down a little bit so the whole card opens up. I can put in our overcalls there, whatever details are like. 
If there's interference from the opposition, there might be some special changes to your the way you bid. Slam conventions, something like Roman key card Blackwood, 1430. And um, Gerber. Again, which players know what all this means? We might do transfers to Alt H or Alt S only, spades or hearts only. Leads, I won't bother with the leads, and the signals might be odd equals encourage, uh, even equals McKinney, whatever. Okay, and then we click on OK to save it. And it's created this rather simple convention card for us. Giving us a summary at the top. Stan American, Better Minor, Capaletti, Gerber, Roman Key Card, and so on. I mean, you could look down here if you wanted to, to find the um, Gerber. Oh, I haven't, I haven't put Capaletti in, so I'll go back into Edit. And I'll put down here Capaletti. Okay. Actually, I might just change the... No need to put your name there because your name is actually showing up the top of the card, up, up, up here, right at the very top. So, that, no, that, that name, it's, it's just a summary. I might actually... Um, I'll leave it. That's right. Okay. So now we've created that card, and I can go choose, and you'll find that that card is sitting now amongst my other cards. Now, just looking at these other cards, there are some default ones. All the ones starting with sample are defaults, and you can tell they're defaults because you can't delete them. The delete button has disappeared. Anything that you've created is deletable. Anything that it comes with the program is not. So the one down the bottom here is not deletable. Now I think that's the one we just created, so I can't see why it's not deletable. Oh, we might have to choose it first. Let's see. Choose. No. Oh, because it's the current card, you can't delete it. So if you want to delete it, you may you need to go to another card. So we'll choose the sample card there. And then if we go back into choose and go down to stand American, we probably should be able to delete it. There we go. You can't delete a card that's currently showing on your screen. But anyway, we can go through and delete delete cards. We'll actually delete that one, stand American, the one I just created. Um, and a few others here. There's another one I, I copied. So we'll, we'll look at copying in a moment. Empty. Can't delete that one. That's one of the defaults. Here's another one. I'll delete that. There is a, a maximum number of cards that you can have. I think it's up to 10. I'm not sure. How many have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. I don't think it includes the defaults. <coughs> you can have 10 of your own, I think. Um, there is a limit, I'm not quite sure of the, of the limit. Okay, so say I want to choose a different card. So to choose a different card, I click choose and just pick the one I want. And we'll go with uh, that one and choose it. Now that card is the one that will show when players who are competing against you decide to open up your system card and have a look. And again, if we want to edit any card that we've chosen, we click on Edit and go in and just make the changes we like. There. Okay, that's it. So that's creating a new card and taking a... Um, well, we haven't looked at taking a copy, so we'll do that. Go back into Identity choose and you might find a card here you want to take a copy of we'll do that one and uh, we'll take a copy 
and the default name is copy of sample card and I'll just call it um, SAYC. This is standard American yellow card. I go save. And if I choose that card now, that becomes my current card. Okay, so that's copy. Now I said there were two ways of opening up a system card. Another way is when you go into the program itself, into the um, program itself, you might see a name there, and you think, oh, I'd like to see their system card uh, because I um, play with them a lot. And want, to, and I want to use their card because they have a better system than me, perhaps. If you left the mouse button click twice on their name, the system card will open up. Now there's two things you can do with that. If you open that, that is not showing as your system card to other players. You're just looking at your partner's system card, Mike's system card. Oops. Didn't realize his phone number was there but anyway um, so you can have a have a look at that and you think oh that's pretty good so I'll take a copy of that one so I do a copy and it says you can copy the convention card to your own library the convention card is called by his name you can use the convention card immediately or you can adapt the card as you um, to your own preferences in other words edit it because you're taking a copy Please note, if you already have a convention card named that, this will overwrite it, overwrite it when you click yes. If you want to copy the convention card, I'll go yes. Now, now it's asked me, do you want um, to make this card your card so that when people look at your card, they'll see this card instead of your current one? And I'll go yes. So now I actually have Mike's card set up as my card. And when we're playing, if the competitors either click on Mike's name to look at his card or on my name, they'll see the same card. You have to be aware that your partner might change his card at any time and that won't update your copy. So if your partner changes their card, they should let you know so that um, if they know you have a copy of it, so you can take a fresh copy. Now I might want to add Mike to my contacts. Now talking of contacts, let's have a look at contacts. If you go under view, you'll see there a couple of uh, things. I always like to show the board results. So if I click that, then while I'm playing, I can see the board results showing down here, how the rest of the people scored by pressing field, and the details of the hand played, which is all the uh, bidding plus the card play and so on. So it's very handy to see how you're going while you're playing. And I want this to stay on top, so I'll click top there, so it won't disappear. Another thing I like to view is my contacts. So F9, I'll click on contacts, and it opens up this contacts. Now you can position these wherever you like. And again, I want it to stay on top, so I'll click top. If I don't do that, so I'll move back over here. Now you notice it's on top. If I unclick it and then click somewhere else in that area, it disappears. It's actually gone behind. There it is, hiding. This one's this one's uh, sticking to the top, but there it is hiding. Right? So we don't want it disappearing, so we'll click top. And now when we click on different areas like I am at the moment, you, oops, that one, that one supersedes it because it's a convention card. It'll stay on top. So we'll just uh, move it over a little bit so it's off the playing area. And you'll notice if I click on the top column there, it just shows the whether the person's online or offline. If they're online, there's a little plus sign. Mike always seems to be online. I think he sleeps at Stepbridge. Um, and so it'll just change the uh, order. Uh, if you click on um, C, that's a code that you can assign to each person. And you can click on contact to put them into strict alphabetical order. I usually have it on C order so that the lowest number shows at the top. We'll look at that numbering system in a moment. And you'll see that Mike's sitting in the lobby at the moment. But everybody else is offline. Offline. 
because there is no little plus symbol showing there. Okay, let's get back to system cards. That's what this is all about. Um, okay, so um, I have Mike G there. Now, I'm not quite sure if Mike's... Oh, Mike is in my contacts already. So I'll just remove him by clicking on the minus sign and take him away. Do you want to remove him? So I'll say yes. But this time I want to add him back in. So I'll go add to contacts. This is Mike again, his card. I'll go add to contacts. And I can uh, set it up so that there's a mes message down, uh, down in the very bottom underneath this message um, input box. There'll be a message showing when he comes into the club and a little sound will show a sound to tell me that he's arrived. And when he leaves, I'm keeping my tabs on him. Um, and also it gives it a code. Now the codes can go from zero down to don't seat. If you don't want to sit with somebody um, <coughs> because you're too uh, your two systems are just incompatible and you don't you don't play well together. You can click on don't seat. Now I have more I only have I already have five people that I don't want to be seated with, so I uh, I can't add any more. But when that happens you can actually give them a code, ranking from zero down to nine. I usually put nine as more people that I don't want to sit with. But um, don't seat is actually used by the computer when it's doing automatic selection and if it finds that you've marked somebody as don't seat it'll try to find you uh, when you're looking for a partner find you a partner that's um, not ranked with an X um, but it ignores the numbers in the, uh, I think it ignores the numbers uh, the other numbers so you can just use them for yourself so if you want to sit with that person all the time you can put zero to say yes I like that person so I'd like to play with him um, and you can work your way down to nine being don't seat. But again, the computer might select those people. Uh, if you have your own regular partner, it probably doesn't really matter whether you have fill that in or not. Okay, so we'll go okay. And Mike's been added back into my contacts up the top here. And because I sorted in code order, it'll start off with the ones online first and then work its way down, zero down to nine. So. <clears throat> okay, so that's a little bit about contacts. Uh, and add to contacts and copy. Uh, I think we've done the copy. I'll just try again, copy. Yes, I think we've already done that. So when you do a copy, it'll ask, do you want to copy it to your own library? And if he's not in your contacts, it'll ask, do you want to add, add, him, add to the contacts? And we go, okay. So I think that's covered everything. Um, just to reiterate, if you want to open up somebody else's card, you go to their name and double left mouse click and it'll open up and you can do add to your contacts, copy, have a look at their identity. A lot of people just have their name there. Um, and I think that might cover the basics and I hope this uh, video has been <laughs> nearly 20 minutes. Um, has helped somebody. Have a good day and keep well.